Hey guys, welcome back to Andy's Dinosaur Reviews. I've got a cool little set here that I recently found at Walmart, which as you can see is an Adventure Force Dinosaurs Jumbo Bucket. And I had seen this set numerous times sitting there at Walmart, and a few times I had looked at it and thought, eh, some of the dinosaurs look kind of interesting. Some of them just look really, really bad and old school, like a lot of the toys I used to play with when I was a kid. And then somehow between then and now, they've changed them a little bit. So there are actually quite a few more interesting looking dinosaur models that they've now included inside, or I guess these would just be probably considered straight up toys. But regardless, you will remember quite a few of these when I do show them to you because if you can recall back to my review and repaints actually of the cheap $1 dinosaur toys from Walmart, well, you'll actually find some of those in here, but they are now shrunken down and much smaller. So instead of me talking to you for the rest of my life about it, let's open this up and I'll bring in some of the figures and show them to you. So initially, as you open it up, you have got just a ton of random trees, which actually look kind of cool and something that could help with a very interesting looking diorama. Even the trees themselves, I feel like could look pretty nice if maybe you gave them a dry brushing over the leaves and maybe a little extra paint as far as some brown variations and stuff within the actual tree itself. And you do get, like I said, quite a few of them. That's three, here's four trees, and we'll pull out a fifth tree. So you've got five trees straight away, which could help to give you a very cool diorama, as I mentioned. Now, when we actually pull out the dinosaurs, one of the very first ones that I see is a very large dinosaur on the top, and you can see it is a Tyrannosaurus Rex. And if you look at it, it is kind of that same sculpt, I think, that we had on the large Walmart version that we had before, the $1 figure that I had shown in the other review, but it's slightly re-sculpted because now the tail isn't completely dragging on the ground, and it's not on that strange curve. I think the head of the Rex was in a slight curve before, too. So they have re-sculpted this one a little bit and actually kind of given it sort of a Rexy type of a look, I think, with the overall appearance. Almost gives me the feeling of the scene in Falling Kingdom when it steps on the Carnotaurus's neck and starts to roar right before the volcano goes off. It really has that kind of a feel to the overall appearance of this sculpt. And I think that's a pretty nice looking model of a T-Rex, actually. I really think it's very highly detailed and really quite nicely done. For the most part, there isn't much paint application that you're going to get on these. It's just a few different variations of brown, and they are hollow, so they're fairly cheap, rubbery figures, but for a decent-looking sculpt, it's not a bad T-Rex. Now, a lot of these are going to be repeats. There's a few of each inside, I think maybe two to three. I don't really know what species this one is supposed to be. Uh, maybe an Allosaurus or something. I don't really have any idea. There's no names other than Made in China there on the dinosaur species themselves that are supposed to give you some sort of a clue as to what species you're looking at, but uh, it's still a pretty decent looking figure. It's fairly nicely detailed, definitely has a decent look, and I feel like if it was given a repaint, could actually be a fairly decent figure. Again, I just don't know exactly what species they were intending this to be, and it's got kind of some big bulky teeth, but it's not half bad either. Then we've got the Velociraptor, which if you remember this guy, actually even has the same paint scheme and everything as the Walmart $1 version that I had shown you guys before, but once again, it's been re-sculpted a little bit. The other one was more of in a tripod position. This one is down in a much lower position. I don't really think this one will probably stand. It's probably a little bit too down low to balance, unless it balances on the hand. But as you can see, again, it's not half bad looking. Fairly decent as far as the detailing goes and everything. And uh, it's very Jurassic Park-ish looking, kind of like the Rex was. So if you would like some Jurassic Park style repaint figures, these are definitely a good choice to buy to practice repainting. Then you've got a very old school Stegosaurus. This one is probably one of the worst figures of the bunch, but has a very cool vintage feel to it. The detail overall is not very good. It's very basic, and in general, the sculpt is incredibly old school and vintage and not even remotely accurate, but it's still somewhat fun, kind of. You also get that same similar type of uh, figure with this Brachiosaurus, which I think is also really, really bad. I'm not a, at all a big fan of this one. I think this one's probably the poorest figure of the bunch, but pretty much rates in the same area as that Stegosaurus that we just looked at. But then we've got a Carnotaurus, so now they have it in an awkward 
tripod position and they've given it a very reddish paint scheme and uh, I kind of feel like they ruined it a little bit by giving it the tripod positioning. I think it looked better the way they had it before, but I guess it gives it their own little flavor a little bit. So if you're looking for a vintage Carotaurus with some fairly decent sculpt and detail, this is probably a good way to go. And then we've got yet another one of these Carnotaurus, so there's two of those guys. Then we have a Dilophosaurus, so this is definitely that same one from the $1 figures once again, but they've shrunken it down and then once again repositioned it a little bit. Now it's got its head turned, I think, in a slightly different positioning compared to what they had previously done with it. It still looks really quite cool though, and again is pretty highly detailed. So as far as a very cool, very cheap looking Dilophosaurus, but something that would be fun to repaint goes, this is probably your guy. You also get another pretty cheap looking Brachiosaurus, a different one than the last one we had, but this one looks a little bit better than the last one as far as the detail and sculpt goes, but still really goofy looking. And uh, he's got quite the large head. Almost reminds me of that old MTV show, The Head, where the alien lives inside the guy's head. Well, maybe there's an alien inside this Brachiosaurus's head. We've also got the Baryonyx or Suchomimus or whatever this guy was supposed to be. We never really confirmed what species they were intending with this. I assume probably a Suchomimus, but I'm not really sure. It doesn't look like they've done anything as far as re-sculpting this one goes. It looks like it's pretty much spot on to what it was when it was the larger figure. They've just changed the coloration of it. However, it looks still really quite nice and again is a pretty highly detailed figure. And uh, I actually like the paint scheme a little bit on this one kind of fun and definitely a nice figure. Then we've got yet another Brachiosaurus and this one is probably the best of the entire box as far as uh, Brachiosaurus goes. It has a very Jurassic Park feel. This one actually might just be a shrunken down version of the $1 one that we had at Walmart but it actually kind of feel like it looks a little better than that one did. So decent Brachiosaurus. It seems like the smaller they're getting the better they get. Then we've got that clone of the Pteranodon which was the $1 Walmart Pteranodon and uh, decent looking paint scheme kind of, it's just all one solid reddish type of a color with yellow on the beak, but it's still pretty highly detailed for the most part. I mean, it's not great, but for a repaint, it could definitely be fun. Super incorrect as far as the teeth and everything go, and it almost has like a carnivorous type of an appearance on it, but it's still kind of a fun sort of pteranodon. Then we've got a stegosaurus, which I feel like looks a good bit better than the other cheaper looking stegosaurus as far as the sculpt goes. The proportions are off quite a bit, but it still looks fairly decent, has some nice sculpt and detail. However, the craziest thing in the world is that they somehow did not include the spikes on the tail, which is just absolutely insane. The most significant part of a stegosaurus, the most iconic part, and they missed it. However, it's still kind of okay, but that really screws it up. Then we've got this Triceratops, which is, uh, I'm not sure if he's the same as the other one. He looks a little bit different, but not too bad as far as the detailing goes. Some of these figures I feel like just need to be stripped down, primered, and then dry brushed to really get an idea of how much sculpt is in them because some of them just kind of have hidden sculpts with hidden details. You just don't notice how good they are till they get repainted. This could be one of them, but at the same time, he's kind of an ugly looking Triceratops. Uh, maybe a repaint would really be the thing you need to do to really tell. Then we've got this small, incredibly vintage and horribly ugly looking Triceratops, which I actually like just because it is so incredibly vintage. He's even got some carnivore teeth and everything up here, so a super goofy looking Triceratops included amongst a few decent models. Then we've got a smaller T-Rex, which is similar to the one we had seen previously, the larger version. However, I again still really feel like this is very reminiscent of that scene in Jurassic World Fallen Kingdom with Rexy stepping on Carnotaurus's neck and giving off a roar. Very, very reminiscent of that. The sculpt and detail on this one as well looks really quite nice. He really is beautifully detailed, honestly, and this is probably my favorite figure of the set. Then we've got another Suchomimus, so you do get numerous of each figure, it seems. A super goofy looking Triceratops with all kinds of crazy awkward proportions. Another Dilophosaurus, who we had already seen. We had another Suchomimus, so now we're on three of this guy. A crazy looking, I guess it's supposed to be a Pteranodon, which just appears to be unbelievably heavily covered in pycno fibers, or that's what it seems to me. Uh, he's a very strange, he almost looks fuzzy. 
He looks like he's a furry Pteranodon, but he's kind of cool looking, I guess, for being a vintage style Pteranodon. We also get an off the wall sort of a Spinosaurus, which again has kind of an interesting looking paint scheme. The sail looks kind of weird, but overall it's just kind of a small toy that's included in a $15 set at Walmart, so it's interesting looking. Very, very badly proportioned once again, similar to the Triceratops. The head is just huge, the sail is kind of small and seems squished, but it's still interesting looking, I guess. Then we actually have the Pteranodon from Walmart. This is the exact one. Same size and everything, the $1 one. Maybe the paint scheme is different, but actually it may have even been in this paint scheme before, I don't really recall. However, you do get that exact figure included in this set. Again, it's really nicely detailed. It really is. You can take a look there. It's a beautiful candidate for a repaint. Then you get another of the Velociraptors and another one of those T-Rex figures. Another Stegosaurus. Another very, very small Triceratops who kind of looks kind of fun. Very vintage looking Triceratops. Another Pteranodon, which appears to be that scaled down version of the one we just looked at. Another of those super awkward looking Triceratops figures. Another Spinosaurus, once again, one of those kind of off the wall Spinos. A very small Stegosaurus, very vintage looking Stegosaurus. Yet another of these very small Pteranodon figures. And an even smaller Brachiosaurus, and so now we have four Brachiosaurus and my Story I told you guys about them getting better the smaller they get was wrong because this guy is hideous. Another of the Carnotaurus, another of the awkward Triceratops, then we've got another very vintage looking Pteranodon, kind of similar to that larger one but now he's down in a smaller size with the crazy furry body. We've got another of the kind of decent looking Brachiosaurus, if my camera would focus, there we go. This one's not half bad. And then probably the oldest, most vintage looking raptor that I could possibly imagine. And this very small, very vintage looking T-Rex figure, which I've always had such a soft spot for this figure because he just kind of reminds me of the type of a T-Rex I would have seen in all the books that I would look at when I was growing up. He's super vintage and kind of decently detailed, so I really do have a soft spot for that figure. And then inside you can see you've got quite a few little rocks and everything in there just for the play factor of the set. And now you can see that we literally have a mountain of dinosaur figures. You can see that there is just a ton of figures in here and you've of course got the trees and everything included and a few larger figures like the Rex and Pteranodon. I am most certainly not going to even attempt to measure any of these guys and in fact the measurement on them would just be pretty much pointless considering how they're just shoveled into a big pile. So I will bring in the Papo Rex for a size comparison. And I've kind of stood up a few of the figures here to try to give you some sort of an idea of what they are like next to the Papo Rex. But you can see that he really quite dwarfs pretty much all of them. He is a fairly large figure. The closest in size would be that Rex back there in the back. But even he really doesn't quite compare to the Papo Rex. They are mostly small figures, but there are a few kind of medium sized figures like the Pteranodon and that Rex in the back. Decent size, fun stuff that would definitely be fun to repaint though. So there are a few fairly decently sculpted figures in here. None are what I would consider scientifically accurate, but there are quite a few that do have some decent sculpt and detail and again could probably make for some very cool looking repainted figures. You of course get a whole bunch of trees and some rocks so you get some extras in there. Things that could help for dioramas if you're trying to take some dinosaur toy photography. A lot of the figures in this set are very vintage looking with the tail dragging on the ground and all that fun stuff so they aren't at all up to date but they are still kind of fun. The paint applications are all really bad, they're primarily like one to two colors and there isn't really much care that has been given to them as far as the paint goes but again this set was only $15 at Walmart and although they are all really cheap figures like I said it's something that's fun to buy if you want a ton of dinosaurs right away or if you would like some stuff to practice repainting on, these are definitely the way to go. So if you do want this set, my advice to you is just head to your local Walmart and check out the Adventure Force area because you're kind of hit or miss with this. This set here with these newer sort of decent sculpts, um, I think just recently showed up. So you kind of have to check and look in the bucket to see which one you're getting because there is, as I said, a set that was before this that had really bad sculpts all around and was just something that I was not interested at all in. But this one's got a few sort of interesting sculpts, so 
you could find some definite inspiration for repaints here. So again, check your local Walmart, pick these guys up if you are interested. But before you do that, don't forget to please like, comment, and subscribe, and I will see you in the next review. Thanks for watching.